today I'm going to be talking about a PID controller. And these are control systems used in robotics, in automation, in airspace. All throughout engineering, PID controllers are used and their purpose is to make a system stable or to control the output to get to a certain set point. As an example, let's say we have a ball that is on a piece of wood that's like a beam and the beam can pivot around some point and whenever the beam pivots of course the ball is going to slide or roll uh, as gravity pulls it. Now our goal is to get this ball to balance in the center and we want to attach a motor to the pivot point so that the motor um, can turn the balance beam in such a way to act against gravity so that the ball will roll towards the center and then as it gets real close to the center then we want the balance beam to level out so that the ball doesn't go past the center but just stays there. All right, so we're trying to keep the ball from falling off the balance beam. And this will be a distance sensor, which will, the computer will use to track the current position of the ball along the sensor, or I mean along the beam. All right, so the way we're gonna do this is head to Python, where I've got three blocks of code. The first, thing we have to do before we can even talk about the PID controller is make a mathematical model of the system. The mathematical model accepts a couple input variables and it updates with time to show where the ball is moving, how it really would in the real world. For example, here's G, which is the acceleration due to gravity and it's a constant. Ultimately, my model has a getx function, which will return the current value of the position of the ball along the beam at that time. And it's dependent on the angle the beam is set to. So just as a example without the controller enabled, we're going to look at the results and see what the ball does. And this is that graph. You see that the ball, the distance just kind of increases and the ball would eventually roll off the beam depending on how long our beam is. So we need to somehow counteract that with a controller. All right. So then I made a function that implements a PID controller. Now the PID controller is really just three different ways that it looks at the sensor data to decide what to do with the output. Now the output of the PID controller is going to be the angle and the input is going to be the motor or the um, the value read by the distance sensor. Now the PID controller has three values or three constants for P, I, and D. And P stands for the pr proportion, proportionality constant. And what it does is it calculates a value that is proportional to the error or the amount that the, the error is uh, the difference between the set point where we want the ball to be and the measured actual position. So the farther is the ball, the farther the ball is from the center of the beam, the more the error. The second value is the I, which stands for the integral. Now in math, an integral can be used to calculate area of a function. So that's what I've done here. And 
what the area does is it's an accumulation of the error over time. Now if the ball were say slightly off maybe by one millimeter, a very small amount, well the proportionality con um, value would be very small because the error is also very small and so any constant value times a really tiny value is also going to be pretty small. So it won't contribute that much to correct the system. However, the I value with each iteration it accumulates the error and so over time very small errors build up and actually amount to something and that I value will grow over time until it's big enough that it causes the motor to move significantly through a different angle. And the third value actually counteracts the P value. It's called the derivative and it is the rate of change of the error. For example, um, if the error is very quickly, if the ball is rolling very quickly towards the center, which is kind of a good thing because we want to get it onto the center as fast as we can, but we don't want it to overshoot and roll past it. So what the derivative value does is if the rate of the error is decreasing really quickly, aka we're getting really close to the set point, then we need to whole boy slow down and subtract some from the angle in order to bring the balance beam back. And we actually want the ball to stop dead on on the center. So these three values have to be tweaked pretty particularly in order to get the system to work. Now, so what I wanna do now is kinda of go through the process of running a few simulations and seeing what the ball does with each. So I already showed you what happens when the pig controller is disabled that is all the constants are zero and so the angle returned from P plus I plus D will always be zero and the beam never moves. However, if we change the proportionality constant to something like 0, 0, um, 5, it's a small value, it just depends on all the different, your it just depends on the system and how often you're running the PID controller function. So I'm just gonna run this guy. It's gonna go for a second and a half and we will see what this does. Now I'm using Excel and um, it's set up so that sheet one has a graph, but there's no data in sheet one. The data comes from the PID file which is a CSV generated from the Python program. And the reason I do that is so that I can go to edit links to external files, update. And that way um, all my, my graph stays the same. It's not like um, the graph gets overwritten whenever the program runs, uh, but just the data changes. Anyway, uh, so you can see that it did actually the opposite we wanted it to do. It seems like the farther the ball got away from zero, the faster it went. So what probably happened is the beam actually spun in the wrong direction, which means we need to put a negative sign uh, to make the beam rotate in the opposite direction, or make the angle be opposite. So let's try this again. There, now we're making some progress. It started at about 15 millimeters, I'll say. I don't actually know what the unit of distance is. It doesn't matter at this point. Um, and it started to roll away from the center, but then the angle changed and it started to roll towards the center, but it overshoot, it, it rolled right past it. Um, and then it, you see it's gotten into this cycle where the beam is moving back and forth like this and the ball just keeps going past the center. So at least we're not falling off the beam at this point, but we want it to stop on the center. So now what we will do is, remember I told you about the derivative constant, what that will do is whenever the ball gets close to the center, 
it's gonna act against and actually make the beam rotate the other way and slow the ball down before it passes it. All right, so let's use a little bit of D and let's try 0 0.01. Now that's interesting. So you can see that as it got closer to the center, it didn't overshoot as much because the ball actually slowed down, but not quite enough. So we're gonna increase the D to 0 0.02. Hopefully it will actually come to a stop before it gets to the center. And I, oops, let me run that again. All right, look at that. This time, the ball was rolling, it picked up speed, it picked up speed, and then the D constant saw that it was getting really close to the center. So it actually spun the beam around to slow the ball down. And you can see that the ball almost never actually hits the center. Well, it just very, very gradually approaches the center. So that actually looks really nice. Um, and this might work in a real world system, but we can play around with it and make it a little better. It looks like it's taking the full 1.5 seconds to stabilize and land on that center. Uh, but if we add the I constant, that will make it drift toward the center just a little bit faster. And we don't need it to be a very, usually the I constant doesn't have to be very big because it's accumulative. So just a small effect over time will make a big difference. And look at that, you can see that it's now at about one second that it leveled off. And we, the other thing we can do to make it move faster is by changing the proportionality constant. That will make the beam move steeper initially. And now you can see I've arrived at the values that I have in the comments before I started the video. And look at that, about half a second, that ball has arrived at the center without going past the center. Now that's pretty cool, but there's one more thing I wanna show you. So far, all we've been doing is trying to get the ball to get on the center. But what if we wanted the ball at some other place on the center? Could our system handle that? So the way we can test that is in the PID function, we're just gonna change the set point. So up to this point, the set point has been zero. Let's put another value in there like 10 and just see what happens. We come back to the results. You can see it actually worked extremely well. Uh, here's 10 and it didn't go past 10 and it just, it got there in about the same amount of time as it did to zero, still half a second. So that's really neat that uh, we can choose the set point to be whatever we want and it will put the ball there. So for example, we we'll put the ball on the beam and if we were to start it at a place that is not stable or not in the center, uh, it's gonna roll towards the center. In order to counteract that, the natural thing to do is to turn the beam opposite to the direction of the ball to try to get it to go the other way. And you know, it takes some tweaking to get it to stay in the center. Uh, and to have a computer do this, you've got a sensor, like an ultrasonic distance sensor that can continuously read the position from one end of the beam. And then you would just define the center of the beam as half the length of it.